Hello everyone, Lee Varis here with another little tutorial video. Many photographers have been asking me about CMYK for book reproduction, so I thought I'd give you all a very basic practical overview of the process and work through some images in Photoshop to illustrate the various issues. We'll briefly look at color management, color spaces relative to CMYK production, and we'll examine corrective procedures in uh, RGB pre-conversion. Then we'll look at typical corrective measures post-conversion in CMYK. And finally, we'll look at some sharpening techniques that are specifically useful in CMYK. Before I go into Photoshop, I just wanted to touch on some basic color management issues. You know that you're going to be starting in RGB and then convert to CMYK. I'm recommending that you use sRGB as your starting place if you know that ultimately you want to end up with CMYK, CMYK files for print. Now why? Uh, because if you could make your images look good in sRGB, which is a more gamut constrained RGB space, you'll have fewer issues with the translation into CMYK. The sRGB is, is still a wider color gamut space than CMYK, but it's not as extremely uh, as extreme as Profoto RGB or as wide as Adobe RGB, which has very saturated colors in the greens and blues, which are, uh, especially the blues are kind of problematic for uh, CMYK, and greens as well. So you're better off, I think, starting off a little bit more constrained. So sRGB is where I'd, I recommend you start. All right, let's go into Photoshop here. And I have a number of files here uh, from my uh, recent trip to Cuba. Got a couple of images here that are kind of interesting. And they, they all kind of pose their own challenges in CMYK. So um, we're going to look at, we'll start off with this one. And now, you know, here on screen, this it looks pretty nice and saturated. And uh, when we convert into CMYK, things will change. Uh, the blues won't look as good. None of these colors are really going to look as saturated. There's a, a mechanism in Photoshop that is intended to give you a preview of the way things are going to look when they print. And under the View menu here, you have the proof setup. That's where you decide what kind of preview you're going to be using. So I'm selecting CMYK here. Um, and specifically, the CMYK that we're using is uh, based on the preferences, uh, or not the preferences, but the color settings in Photoshop. So if you set up your color settings uh, for and in my case, I've got it customized. And most people generally start up here with North American general purpose, and you get sRGB as, as your uh, uh, color space. So in general, I think that's a, that's a good place to start. We always want to use US web coded swap. Uh, that's standard web offset press V2. Um, for better or for worse, um, this is the the CMYK color space that most printing outfits assume that you're using. Um, presses in Hong Kong actually try to emulate US swap because they do so much printing for the US market. Um, other others places may or may not uh, adopt swap, but they always assume that any incoming CMYK files are in uh, US web coded swap, which is the, the Photoshop standard uh, CMYK. Um, the only other thing, you know, the reason I customize this is I, I like to have these ask when opening and ask when pasting and ask when opening uh, check boxes checked. Um, we're going to use the Adobe engine for conversion and relative colorimetric as our intent. Um, Sometimes you'll see recommendations to use absolute color metric or perceptual. Um, I think uh, perceptual it depends on um, actually the actual profile that you're going to use, whether perceptual or relative color metric looks better. In general, when you use relative color metric, you're going to get a slightly more saturated result when you convert. Um, I won't go in, 
into a lengthy discussion about that, but you know, there you have it. You can sort of ignore these advanced options. But something like this is a good place to standardize on uh, your color settings. So that way, when we go image mode CMYK, we're going to get that US uh, swap V2 uh, color conversion. OK, so let's go back to our view menu. We have selected CMYK for our, our proof setup. And if we select proof colors, you'll notice that the screen uh, preview will change a little bit. Um, now we can go back into the proof setup and, and customize this. And here are two things that uh, you can do to, to help uh, adjust the display so that it gives you a little more of a simulation of what things look like when it prints. The, the main thing is, uh, one thing you can do is simulate black ink. And you'll notice that when I do that, it just gets a little duller. The other thing, uh, which does both, actually, is to check simulate paper color. And you'll notice that things really get dull when we do this. If I check the preview on and off, you can kind of see it really gets dull. Um, this is, is an attempt to adjust the screen to give you kind of a feeling for the kind of contrast that you're going to get on paper. It does not actually work that well. Most people see this as just degrading the quality of the image. And when you look at something that is printed under viewing booth conditions, it just doesn't look this bad uh, because we're, we're judging the colors and things in context. But it can kind of give you a sense that uh, how things may get a little bit muddier, especially if you have a lot of dark tones. So um, you can decide to use this or not. I'm going to. Uh, Basically, uh, for this video, I'm going to not be using this. So um, we will turn the proof colors off. But every once in a while, it's, sometimes you can sort of toggle it on and off just to see what's happened or get a feel for, you know, like, are the black, are the shadow values compressing and getting muddy looking? Um, so that brings up the issue of the range of the image and why you should be looking at the info panel. Um, so I always keep the info panel here open all the time so that I can evaluate um, the numbers in the image. And especially for CMYK reproduction, we want to set uh, our white point and our black point to get the maximum range on, on paper. It doesn't always automatically happen. Now, this has been adjusted in Lightroom uh, mostly just to look pleasing. Now, when I'm in Photoshop, I can get very specific numbers. And I'm looking for the lightest area in the image, and I want to set that as my white point, assuming, of course, that it's white. I think I have a, a white point here in these white clouds over here. And the darkest thing in the image, somewhere maybe a shadow in here, uh, I'm going to find something that I, should be black. So you're going to do yourself a big favor if you set these points to specific numerical values. So what we're looking for is our white point to be 245, 245, 245, neutral, and uh, just a hint of a dot when it converts. We want to have just a little bit of tone there. So we're not setting it to 255, which would be blank paper white. And, and conversely, we're not setting the black point to be 0, 0, 0. Uh, we want it to be typically for CMYK Press, I would set these things to 15, 15, 15. And that would ensure that, that you have some sense of shadow detail for those values that are going to print just lighter than maximum black. If we set it to zero, you're probably going to crush your blacks. Uh, everything when it converts will, be, will print black if it is uh, darker than 15, 15, 15. So we're giving up 15 levels of, of possible detail. OK, so first I'm going to show you a trick for identifying the lightest and darkest points in the image. So we're going to use a threshold adjustment layer here. And the threshold adjustment layer turns the image into black and white. We're just going to use this to find the darkest point. So if I move the slider over to the left, the last thing that winks out is the darkest thing in the image. So and, I, and I'm, I'm thinking that there's a little shadow here that's the darkest thing in the image. So I'm going to zoom in. 
okay and that point is my darkest thing so I'm going to place a fixed color sampler so underneath the uh, eyedropper tool there's the color sampler tool and the color sampler tool allows me to place a point and I'm going to just place it right in there right in the middle of that area I'm going to make sure my sample size is 11 by 11 uh, mostly for high-res images uh, that are high enough res for print uh, you want to use a sample size that averages more pixels together so uh, I generally start with 11 by 11 or sometimes 5 by 5 if, if it's a smaller image but we'll stick with 11 by 11 most modern cameras now are shooting such high-res files that you should probably uh, use 11 by 11 okay so now let's uh, let's back out and uh, we're gonna find the lightest point so I move the slider over to the right and the last thing that sort of winks out and I know it's going to be that cloud over there let me, let me make my my dial a little bit smaller so it, it this cloud here is probably going to be the lightest thing yeah you can see a highlight right there and again I'll, I'll zoom in and uh, place a fixed color sampler right in the highlight there. Now I'm going to throw this uh, threshold adjustment away and just look at the, that white point in the image. And Yes, it is a, a bright area right on the cloud um, and my shadow point is over here. It's a shadow in the palm tree. Okay, so right now let's look and see. So the, the white point right now is 253, 240, 220. I would like that white point to be neutral so that it's the lightest thing. And it's the lightest thing, white, and it should be neutral. The darkest thing also should be neutral. And right now we're starting off in a good neutral place, 3, 2, 3. But I, I need that to be 15, 15, 15. So assuming that there's no other corrections that we want to make in the image in RGB, um, we're going to just set our white point and our black point. So I'm going to go ahead now and select my curve. And uh, I can make the curve just a little bit bigger. And I want to set that to 15, 15, 15. So it needs to get lighter. So I'm going to take that point and pressing up along the left-hand edge of the curves dialog, I'm going to move it up. And you can use the arrow keys too to get more precise. And I'm just going to look at this number here and wait till I get 15 and then you know if I want to be really anal here I can make the I can go to the green channel to make that 15 which by nudging it up just a little bit okay so then we're gonna go over to the white point and I have 253 in the red channel so I know I need to make the image a little bit darker but but at least in the red channel so let's go over to the red channel and in this case I'm gonna pull that endpoint down and now use the arrow keys until it says 245. Now my green channel needs to get brighter, so I want to hug the edge. And whenever you're moving these endpoints, you want to make sure your point just sort of hugs the edge, the edges of this uh, this grid uh, area. So I'm going to use the arrow key to nudge this point to the left along the top edge until it says 245. Okay, same thing here in the blue channel. I want to nudge that along the top edge. So I'm making this brighter. In the red channel I made darker. So the, the blue channel I'm going to make it brighter until it says 245. So I now have 245, 245, 245, 15, 15, 15. And I haven't really even looked at the image. But that is guaranteeing me that I have maximum range for my printing conditions. And you can actually see it's it's brightened up and, and sort of cooled off the highlight a little bit. And it's also opened up the shadows just a little bit. Okay, so we can go ahead, flatten this image, and now we're going to convert. So we'll do image mode and CMYK. If you are lucky enough to get a custom profile from your printer, if they have their own uh, CMYK profile you can load it and access it here in the convert to profile so you would take the file that they give you and put it in uh, in your library folder uh, 
for where the profiles are stored, depending on your, your OS. And then you would find that profile here. So you can kind of see I've got a bunch of other profiles, like the gray call, uh, Grackle profiles here. There's some more web-coded profiles. Um, we're actually using the US web-coded SWAT v2. Uh, in, in the absence of any profile, which is uh, actually very common these days for the printer not to give you a profile or not to have one available or not to even understand what you're asking about when you say, please give me the profile for your press. Usually they'll just say, oh, you just use web, you know, uh, US web coded swap V2, even if they're doing sheet fed printing, you know, so uh, in general, <laughs> the web coded profile ends up being better than the sheep fed uh, profile. So, um, but at any rate, uh, you would select that profile here if you're going to convert to a custom profile. We don't actually need to do that, but I'm going to go ahead and show you the process here. Select the profile uh, for the press conditions that you're going for. If you don't have a profile, just select this because that's everybody sort of sets themselves up for that kind of condition. Um, you can uh, use not absolute but relative color color metric. Use the black point compensation. Uh, you can use dither. It adds just a little bit of noise, uh, which helps with the banding that that may uh, crop up. I don't think this particular image is going to have any issues with that, but it's, not, it's usually a good idea to use dither. Okay, so we say okay. And now we are in CMYK. You can see our channels here are, uh, instead of RGB, they are CMYK. So there's our cyan channel, our magenta channel, and our yellow channel. You can kind of see there's a lot of yellow ink in this image. And then here's the black channel. Okay, so um, now we can kind of look at the info panel. These these yellow, uh, I'm just sort of moving my cursor over here on the yellow here, and I can see the numbers that say a cyan is 20%, magenta is 33, uh, yellow is uh, 100, just like we would expect maximum yellow to be. Uh, but we have this sort of, this isn't a really pure yellow, it's, it's a little more orangey. But oddly enough, and this happens almost every time when you do a conversion in Photoshop, you end up with a little bit of cyan in the yellow. Uh, our black point now is uh, these the, the heavier numbers here, uh, 74 cyan, uh, 67 magenta, 66 yellow, and oddly 83% K, which is the black ink. So if we set this to be a black point, wouldn't we expect the, the black ink to be a little heavier here? This is also very typical of the uh, Photoshop conversion into CMYK. We hardly ever get a high enough black. Um, our white point, just barely a little bit of a dot. We don't have any black in it, obviously, but we have a little bit of cyan, a little bit of magenta, a little bit of yellow. Uh, that's all very normal, just to give us a sense of some sort of texture or shape there. Uh, you wouldn't want this to be 0, 0, 0, because it would just be blank paper. Um, and we do want some kind of sense of uh, texture there. OK, so what are we going to do? We have cyan in our yellow, and we, the black doesn't seem very black. Well, this is where we're going to use um, selective color. Let's see, uh, selective color. We're going to make a selective color adjustment. This is a tool that I see abused a lot in RGB. It's really very specific for CMYK. So we're going to load that as an adjustment. It comes in as an adjustment layer. And um, now we're going to, we can adjust the ranges of colors. And what we're really looking for, we want to adjust those blacks so that we have more black and less uh, cyan, magenta, and yellow. Now, while I'm adjusting this, I'm going to show you something. You want to use absolute. Those the relative will uh, will work, but it it doesn't give you as fine-tuned control over the actual numbers that you're hitting. So we have a we have a point point placed here for uh, for our black point, and we have a point placed for a white point. So for the blacks, we definitely want to use absolute. And we want this black value to come up. So I'm going to 
increase that till we get, let's get this up there, you know, about 98. We don't have to try and hit uh, 100. And you'll notice now that suddenly there's, there's a lot of extra black density showing up. Um, but right now we're violating the total ink. So you can kind of see here, if I change the readout now from CMYK to total ink, we'll, we're, we have, we've gone from 290 to 305. So typically in uh, web print conditions, we don't want to go uh, over 290 in our uh, total ink. With sheet fed conditions, you can generally come up uh, around 300 uh, or maybe as high as 320, depends on what your printer uh, can tolerate. But you're always safe at under 300. So we've, we've added black, but we now have too much total ink. So we have to sort of subtract um, some colors. We can very safely subtract yellow. It doesn't really contribute that much to um, the total uh, density. It's kind of a light color, but we, you know, we also should should, should subtract a little cyan. Uh, I typically what I do is I, I go five, five and five. So I'm kind of trying to subtract close to what I get um, from my addition of black. So I add these up, they come to 15. I'm adding about 17 to black. I'm well. I'm under that 300% limit, so I'm in good shape. Let's go back to CMYK and see what our actual numbers are. So cyan should always be a little heavier than magenta and yellow. And, and black, we want that up at uh, 98 or, you know, maybe if we really feel like we need to punch some black, we can go a little bit higher. But I'm looking at this now, and you can kind of see that we've actually added a little bit of contrast and uh, that's all coming from the black ink, which is darker than our other inks. So there's two things, again, remembering here the two things. We want, we want to have more black than the original conversion, which ended up at 83. But we don't want to violate the total uh, ink limit. So you can go down here and you can see we started off at 290, and I'm getting close to it here, 292. So I haven't really changed my total ink. but the look now is a little more contrast because I'm using more black ink. So that's something you want to almost always do. And depending on the image, um, you know, how much black you add will, will change a little bit depending on, on that uh, black point. Um, okay. So what else? We want to we want to take out some cyan in this this yellow. So let's look at now yellows. And I'm going to go ahead and place another sampler here on the yellow here. So number three is uh, it's got you know 100% yellow, which is what we'd expect. I'd like to take out black and cyan to just make this yellow a little more vibrant. So again, we'll go back into our selective color adjustment. We're working on yellows, and I'm using absolute. So I'm looking at these numbers, and I'd like to take out cyan might not be able to get it all out because we have a it's not a, a very bright yellow but at least you know I take it out until it I it stops right I can't get any more yellow out of it and that's right about here so let me just right right at that point minus 21 I've, I've minimized the cyan um, and I can take some black out of it too that eh, doesn't look like I'm going to be able to move the black but we'll, we'll adjust it there just like that Okay, so I've made an attempt to minimize my cyan. I've gone from 20 to 7%. I haven't been able to move the black at all, but um, let's now toggle this on and off. And you can kind of see, whoa, you know, we just kind of brightened up the yellow. We've also ended up adding some contrast into the trees. So the highlights in the trees are now kind of looking a lot nicer because we've taken out some of the dulling uh, cyan, which is polluting that color. All right, so there's one other thing uh, that is sometimes useful, and that is in blues. Now we have some blues here. A lot of times um, when you have a saturated blue sky, it kind of shifts towards purple because it ends up with a little too much magenta. 
So what we can see here is that uh, uh, well let's put let's put a sample sample point here on on the sky. Well not in the clouds but I'll I'll just pick this blue area here. So you can kind of see that in the blue the cyan value is the highest. We have just a little bit of of magenta which is making it look blue. Otherwise it would look a little kind of blue green. That's kind of the color of cyan. And we have no yellow and no black. That all looks pretty good. Uh, if we had a, a deeper blue, let's see what our blue down here looks like. So a deeper blue has uh, heavier colors here, but again, still the magenta is not as close to cyan. Uh, um, you know, it's like half the value. So that, that's pretty decent. But typically to make the blues look a little more vibrant, we can take out a little bit of magenta. So we can kind of reduce the magenta value just a little bit. And I don't, you know, it depends on the image how much you need to do this. So this is kind of a judgment call too. So I'm, I'm taking out about minus 7%. I just want to drop that down just a little bit. And uh, you can toggle this on and off. And, you know, usually it, it makes the blue a little bit brighter. What I'm trying to fight is I don't want these areas of blue sky to look purple. There's a little bit of magenta happening in these clouds, uh, but we can take out, you know, just a little bit of magenta, uh, and it sort of forces the blue back into that kind of pretty uh, baby blue range and away from, you know, looking purple. Other images will suffer from this a little more than, uh, than uh, others. So just be on the lookout for that, especially if you have a very saturated sky. Uh, but those are the those are the the moves that you're going to make. You're going to go. Uh, you're going to adjust your blues to take out magenta. You're going to adjust your yellows to take out cyan, and you're going to adjust your blacks to add more black and take out cyan, magenta, and yellow. Okay, uh, and then we would flatten this and go uh, go to print. So I'm going to go ahead and flatten that. Uh, you can save this file if you get a press proof back. You can make subtle adjustments uh, with those uh, selective color adjustments. Let's let's take a look at another image here. Uh, let's see. Let's look at. Okay, so let's look at this one. This one has that yellow again. Uh, we want to set a white point, a black point. Um, not convinced that there's a good white point in this image. You can't really use specular highlights. These are reflections. Uh, but let's let's take a look. Let's put our threshold adjustment on here. Find the black point first, and it's it's going to be a shadow in here for sure. So uh, we'll get our uh, sample tool, and I'll zoom in, and we'll place it right in the the grill there. Um, and let's find our highlight. So. Our white point looks like these these the highlights on the fenders there. We can't use those specular highlights. I, I, I wouldn't really trust that. Um, so it doesn't look like any of these values because they're all just speculars. If I, if I turn this on and off, you can kind of see you can't use these type of highlights. Now I could neutralize this color, but I can't really set that as a white point because it's not as bright as some of these specular highlights. So basically, and I can see really that I have values that go all the way to the end here. So these are probably already clipped in at least one channel. So uh, not a reliable uh, play thing to use for a, a white point. So I just wanted to point that out to you. Not every image has a good white point, so you can't force things to be white if they're not really white. And you can't use speculars because they're usually clipped in one channel. So I've set a black point, though. So we're going to throw this threshold adjustment away. So my black point's neutral, but it's too low. Uh, you know, these, these highlight values, just, uh, just for your edification, if I read that value, 251, 252, 250, it's actually fairly neutral. Uh, 241, uh, 239, two, well, 241, 240, 240. Um, I think these are, these are already neutral. Uh, this one's pretty high. It's already higher than um, 245. 
But again, these are specular highlights. We can't use those as a white point. So I'm going to say there's no white point in this image, but there definitely is a black point, and we've got it a little high. So I'm going to put a curve on here. And since it's already neutral, all I have to do is elevate that curve until it says 15, 15, 15. OK. Now, we, we elevate the curve so that this shadow area in the grill here actually gets a chance to, to uh, reproduce and not plug up when it goes through the conversion. Otherwise, everything is looking pretty good. Um, you know, in general, you can do all these adjustments in your uh, raw processor like Lightroom or Camera Raw, then bring it into Photoshop and just set the black point. You're ready for your conversion. I'm going to go ahead and just do the conversion this way, get this into CMYK. And it always tells you, you know, you're about to convert using the um, swap v2 profile and you know it's just to warn you and I know yeah I get it go ahead and convert that's the profile I want to use okay so now there's my black point again uh, the black is not very high I can add some contrast here just by using uh, my selective color so I'm going to go ahead and do that again uh, and I want more black so I'm going to get that black value up there around 98 and uh, I'll go ahead and you know, I'll take 5, 5, and 5 out of it. Okay, so I've got 69, 63, 61, and then 98. And that's already looking more, has a little more snap to it. Um, the other color, of course, that's important is the yellow. Let's look at that. Uh, I'm just moving my cursor around up there, and I'm looking at the CMYK numbers up here. Uh, definitely, there's 18% cyan in there. Um, so, you know, the cyan is is a color that gives the, uh, it's an ink that gives the yellow some weight, but it also dulls it and desaturates that yellow. Uh, so what we'd, what we'd like to do is eliminate some of that to make this yellow look a little brighter. So again, we'll take out some cyan. And let me put a sampler on there so I can look at that move. I'll just stick it over there. So we'll take out some cyan. I'm looking at the, the cyan value here. It went from 20 to 8. I can get it down as low as 6. And that's it. So I find the point where it stops changing. That's minus 21 here. Um, and you can kind of see how much you didn't really realize how dull it looked before and now when we take that out uh, now it's really brightened up that yellow okay so in this image there's no other colors that I really need to worry about uh, I've got a nice black there let's just double check my total ink on the black and I'm, I'm in good shape I haven't really modified it at all um, so uh, I think we're good Again, toggling the eye on and off, you can kind of see that it now looks a, a quite a bit more snappy. So, so we're good there, and uh, I'll go ahead and flatten the image. All right, let's take a look at, at this image. And this one has, has a blue in it, um, and there's some, there's some things in here that we can do. It's definitely going to set a, a, a white point and a black point. Uh, we're in RGB, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, we'll find the black point here, uh, and I see it's a shadow down there. Maybe, yeah, right. Any one of these shadows will work. We'll go. We'll go for this one here. Okay. Get up the threshold again. We'll go to this side, and looks like a highlight on this shirt is probably. That looks like our brightest point there. Or maybe this highlight here. Let's see which one lasts longer. Maybe this one right there. So uh, get my sample point, put it right there. All right. Yeah, make sure it's right in that area. So that's that's a, a highlight uh, on, a, on a shirt. So we don't want to make the shirt blank. We want to have a sense of that there's some 
shape and texture to this. So we're going to set that point to 245. And our black point is over here, deepest in the shadow. Now, even though his pants here look like they're maybe a blue, or dark blue, we want to set that black point to be neutral. And it's pretty close, 4, 4, 5. Okay, so let's, uh, let's back out here. Uh, and we'll just do it by the numbers, get up that curve. Let's elevate that black point until uh, the, the blue there, the blue value is 15. And uh, we can get the, the red and the green. You know, I'm, I'm being sort of obsessively anal here about these colors. And I, I like to tell people that, you know, these kinds of adjustments by the numbers, are, they're sort of like Pirates of the Caribbean, for those of you that have seen that movie. Um, they're not exactly rules, but more like guidelines. So you don't have to get really fascist about it, but these these numbers uh, are they they do work. Uh, so as long as you can get things close, they don't have to be exactly uh, perfect. Uh, you can be one to three percentage points and be uh, you know visually nobody will be able to tell. So um, let's go ahead. We got we got two forty five in the blue channel. Let's go to the the green, I'm just nudging it to the left using the arrow keys and watching those numbers go up. And we'll do it in the red. So establishing that range now, when before we convert, uh, it seems like it makes it a bit brighter. This is pretty common. You know, people will adjust their RGB image and they'll look nice and rich. And then when it goes to print, it gets all muddy and, and, and dark looking. So just setting that white point to the right place to establish the range and opening up that black point to a place where it's actually reproducible uh, lightens up the image automatically. So uh, let's go ahead and flatten it and then do our conversion. Go mode CMYK. Yes, we know. And uh, now we're in CMYK. Again, our blacks, uh, everything can be adjusted now. Um, the blue probably, um, just move my cursor over and look at the CMYK numbers. Uh, we don't have a lot of magenta in this anyway, so I don't think that really needs any adjusting. Uh, but we can certainly adjust the black point with our selected colors. So let's go ahead and do that. Blacks uh, will... We'll add some black until it gets up there. About 98% is usually a good place to end up. Uh, take out, a, I usually start with like five. And um, so we got 69, 63, 62, 98. So it really, it moved quite a bit. Uh, that should keep our total ink right in that ballpark. So I haven't really violated it. But again, doing this one little move here in the black really makes that those those uh, shadows get nice and crispy looking. And it's still we still have uh, detail. So that's a that's a nice little move to remember. Uh, and I, I, just about every image can use that. You can even save these and apply them to multiple image uh, images and, and uh, you know just as like the last adjustment for that black. Okay, so I'm going to do one more thing. So we're going to flatten this, and uh, let's look at this at uh, 50%. Now I've, you know, I did my sharpening. Uh, I did some pre-sharpening in Lightroom, uh, Camera Raw, and just a tiny little bit of sharpening in Photoshop. But there's one little trick in uh, CMYK where you can sharpen things and usually avoid add adding any extra noise to the image, and that is to sharpen the black plate. So if we look at these individually, here's the cyan plate. They always have this kind of, the color plates usually have some what they call under color removal. So they're taking some color out of the shadows and replacing it with black. Now here's the magenta, there's the yellow. So all these color plates look kind of funky. And then you get into the black, and it looks like you know, like this sort of contrasty, it's really just the shadow values that have any black ink in them. You notice it's like nothing in the white shirt here, uh, almost nothing in the face of the guitar. But in the skin, 
you know, and in the shadows, there's 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 a fair amount of black ink. Now we can add, what we can do is sharpen just this black plate just a little bit, and often we can get just a little sense of, of sharpness out of that. You can either do that uh, directly, or we can do you know do it with a with a uh, make a layer and sharpen it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, we'll do this. We'll, we'll, we'll make a layer and we'll run unsharp mask on the layer so we're not affecting the background. But before I do that, I'm going to minimize uh, how this blends in with the, the background layer. So I'm going to use blending options and I'll get the dialog in here. What I want to do is I, I only want to affect the black plate. So I'm going to uncheck all these, the, the cyan, magenta, and yellow, and I'll leave just the black plate checked. Okay. And I'm going to, so essentially what's happening is this layer now is going to replace the black plate in the underlying layer. So I can sharpen that whole layer, but only the only sharpening that will be uh, evident will be in the black plate. So we're going to go to Unsharp Mask. And you kind of see here 500% and a radius of 10 is perhaps a little bit much. Uh, but I'm going to leave the amount at 500% and you know, select a radius. Depending on you know, how large you're printing this, um, I'd say you know, anywhere from you know, one, one and a half pixels uh, or one is probably good. You can go smaller. Um, what you're looking for when you're at, at a 50% view, you're looking to see that sharpening, uh, but you don't want to see excessive halo. So in turning this on and off, I can kind of see quite a bit of sharpening happening in the skin. It, it really should look just a little bit more sharp than you'd like it. In fact, I'm going to I'm going to bring this up just a little bit and I want so I want that it's definitely adding quite a bit of sharpening but it's really only affecting the black plate so I'm not getting extra noise like in the shirt only in those dark areas and it's at 500 percent it's too much but I'm doing this in a layer here so I can reduce the opacity of that layer I, you know some generally I'm like between 50 and 60 percent is enough so I'm gonna go to 60 here and depending on the image content you can you can tolerate quite a bit of sharpening in the black plate and it really makes the image look a lot sharper the only thing you want to uh, avoid is is like the sense of too much uh, dark scum noise um, but Really, in this image, we could probably get away with, you know, maybe even 65% extra sharpen. Again, we're looking at it at 50%. If we look at it at 100%, it's just going to look way too sharp. It looks ugly, but it won't ever print that big. And when it goes through the diffusion dither, uh, or the the, you know, the the screen dither of the CMYK, all of that kind of will look. Uh, Will go away, and you really this this is the print size. We we're at about 25 percent. That's how big of a print, like a full page in the book. Um, so you can tolerate quite a bit of sharpening there. Again, keeping in a separate layer so that you can adjust it later if it seems like it's too sharp. Just just reduce the opacity. Okay. So that I've revealed my my sharpening technique there. Uh, Let's do. Let's go through this image really quickly. Again, uh, it's, we're in RGB now. Let's set our black point and our white point. Kind of find. And, and this is a this is a question here. Like, what is the significant black point? Well, the significant black point is is not usually not the background. But in this case, I'm, I am just going to make this area down here uh, the blackest thing. Place that. Now, if it's like a little hole down here in the corner of the image, you know, I don't really care if that plugs up. But in this case, I do want the, 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 the building to have some sense of texture. And I'm sure enough, our white point's going to be a highlight here on his shirt. 
So let's place a point there. And now I can throw this away. Sure enough, there's our, our lightest point. And uh, let's look at our numbers, 248, 249, 254. It's a little hot. Uh, so we can bring that, that down just to make sure that we have some dot in there so we can see that it's wrinkled fabric. And our black point's not neutral, and it's, um, it's a little low. So let's, let's go ahead and make that adjustment. Uh, I'm going to elevate the black just a little bit so I get that green to 15, and then we'll go to the red. Put that at 15, and we'll go to the blue and put that at 15. Uh, and then over here on the highlight side, we've got to bring that blue point down so that we're at 245. Uh, same with the green here, nudge it down just a little bit till we get to 245. And the same thing with the red, uh, nudge it down till it says 245. So that's now neutralized and the black point's neutralized and elevated a little bit. Uh, and if we toggle the eye on and off. You, kinda, it's, you can't really see that it's changed that much. It has elevated the black point a bit. Uh, but this makes for a nicer conversion. So we'll flatten it and we'll do our image mode CMYK. Okay, and uh, here's the thing. You know, we can we can evaluate the skin tone better in CMYK. We usually want to see a little more yellow than magenta. And uh, in this case, perhaps we can use a, uh, a curve just to kind of uh, take out a little, a little bit of the magenta here in the area of the, the skin color. So I, I'd like to have uh, yellow be about 10 to 15 percent higher and actually in most places except for the, his face in most places it is so you know what I'm not gonna edit the, the skin color I think it's fine um, but and there's no problem colors in this image the green I think is fine um, we can Perhaps maybe use the selective color to make the red a little less magenta, maybe, you know. So this is uh, skin color is, is kind of a red. We can take a little magenta out of it just a little bit, and that kind of makes it look a little uh, yellower. Um, but the main thing here is the blacks. Let's make sure our black point gets up there. 98. Uh, we'll take out like 5, 5, and 5. So 69, 63, 61, 98. That, those, are, those are good numbers. My total ink hasn't moved very much. That's good. So, um, so we're good to go. And again, adds that little bit of crispness there in the black without uh, destroying the black detail. And flatten. Let's do our adjustment for the sharpening. Take our blending options, uncheck cyan, magenta, and yellow. And uh, let's go to 50%. Uh, I'm going to look at this and do unsharp mask. I'm going to use the same values I had before. OK, and then maybe, uh, maybe, well, yeah, we could probably tolerate quite a bit of sharpening on this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let it go here to 85%. I think that that really helps. Okay, when you're ready to go, when you're giving your files to the printer, flatten it and, and save it as a, a TIFF. All right, so we've done all these images. Let's see. Anything else here? Uh, a similar, similar situation. We probably want to make sure we have uh, uh, we have a nice detailed black. Uh, Set our white point, black point, really quickly. Okay, black values, very dark over here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set that because there are some very dark values in here. I want to make sure that I don't have anything that's that that plugs up. Over here, you know, maybe just turn that off. These areas are really dark. 
uh, and they're not quite as well that's one percent that's pretty dark uh, but there's some dark tones in here that I, you know I kind of want to I don't want to plug everything up I want to make sure that I see some detail so um, let's see is there is there a, a white point let's see do we have something that we I think probably our white arrow here um, and okay so let's adjust using our curve easy black point bring it up to 15 our white point not very neutral and it seems like it's higher in the blue let's go bring that up to 245 now in the blue channel now I move to the green adjust it here until I get 245 I'm using the arrow keys and our red and actually setting this has sort of opened the image up and it's warming it up because we were a little we were a little cool we were in the shade it wasn't you know initially didn't look bad but we've we've opened it up and added some warmth to it just by neutralizing that white point so this is something you know setting the black point and a white point always a good idea uh, when you're going to go to print so we'll flatten the image mode CMYK all right are there problem colors maybe the blue but um, I'm just moving the cursor around it, we have a very kind of cyan -y blue here so I'm not really it doesn't look like it's gonna get you know the cyan values is you know pretty much more than double the magenta value so we're definitely not going to have a blue going purple maybe the blue on the sign but it's this very small area and it still looks although it's not double it's pretty close so I don't think we're gonna have any real issues okay so no problem colors um, but again selective color we're gonna do the black thing uh, so our black point now uh, is number one over there uh, 84 again why you know when the conversion don't we get you know in the 90s for our black um, we'll go to 98 um, again I'll take out five take out five here and take out five there now we're back again total ink we're not violating that total ink it's it's pretty much uh, hasn't moved that much uh, and we have a nicer looking a little snappier looking image all right and can we sharpen this can we sharpen the black plate it, it, we may be able to get pick up some extra sense of sharpening here um, we'll do that again duplicate the layer go to my blending options uncheck cyan magenta and yellow and do our unsharp mask and you can kind of see really we got a lot of sharpening effect happening it's too much knock that back you know maybe maybe that's I think that's gonna look pretty it's gonna it sort of pops all the texture and, and really the things that look nice and gritty are these black areas these dark areas look at that I don't get that those highlights kind of pop um, and this is you know it, it really is sort of a season to taste you know you you, uh, you have to be careful with this you can certainly overdo it but by keeping it in a separate layer you can always bring it down just a little bit so um, again view the sharpening at 50% try to get it to look sharper without it really looking crazy so like you know at 100 percent it starts to look a little bit like an illustration we definitely want it to look like it's it's had some it's gotten sharper so just toggling on and off and I, I think you can kind of see sharpening the black plate is is really uh, very powerful uh, in CMYK even though we had some sharpening already applied in RGB um, just a little bit in the black plate is often a really good idea So to review, it will be much easier for you to start an sRGB uh, when you're going to be going to CMYK ultimately. 
the sRGB is not as wide a color gamut as Adobe RGB, and uh, when we're going from a more constrained color space to an even more constrained color space, there's no reason to force that translation to be as extreme. So, you know, if we can make the image look really good in, in sRGB, uh, it's much better. You might even uh, convert from your Adobe RGB files into sRGB and do little tweaks to the contrast and saturation sRGB, then convert to CMYK. Um, worth considering, uh, may not be a that big a deal to most people, but you know, if, you know, you might as well start off with a slight advantage. Remember to use the info panel numbers. And this is very important, set your black point to 15, 15, 15, and your white point to 245, 245, 245, before you convert to CMYK. After converting, uh, use the selective color adjustment to adjust the blues. Um, you, you want those blues to have a little uh, less magenta and maybe a little more cyan. Uh, you want the blacks to use more black and less yellow, magenta, and cyan. And you want to use a, a selective color on yellows to remove cyan. That will make those yellow colors pop. And finally, uh, consider sharpening the black channel after conversion uh, to get just that little bit of uh, sharpness enhancement. Um, it's really a, a nice trick in CMYK. All right. Well, thank you for watching. Uh, be sure to check out my website for blog posts, web galleries, and other online educational materials. And join my email list to find out about upcoming workshops and photo tours. Thanks again, and have fun in all your pixel adventures.